I have this nice old Marshall here, which has a master volume and a preamp volume. So we can get preamp overdrive at a very low master, and I have it running through a dummy load with a padded down speaker so we can stand to be in the same room with it. Um, <laughs> But I'll go ahead. And a slightly out of tune guitar. So I do the uh, the the uh, palm muted. Uh, so the kind of goes in and out of distortion smoothly, but you know, uncomplicatedly. Now, if we turn the master all the way up so it gets into the actual power stage and turn the gain up to the same amount, now you start hearing that which is the power amp recovering from its uh, overdrive situation. And that extra bacon fat sizzle, if you will, is it's part of the sound. Yeah. Play maestro. into a dummy load a little bit. Does that add some more high frequency? Yeah, it, uh, inter it interrupts the feedback circuit at high frequencies, letting the highs come through a little more. Gotcha. Uh, it works, does more into a real speaker because the speaker has more reactance at those frequencies. Right. So then preamp gain turned all the way up doesn't do that because... Doesn't, uh, well, with the master below the point of power amp breakup, all you're hearing is a single-ended, uncomplicated distortion. It doesn't have that extra fizzle in it. To, it has the basic kind of grind. Can we turn that one all the way up? I had to inch it down a little because we were getting, I can tell when we're getting into power amp distortion because watch the uh, waveform, the yellow waveform. Pink waveform. As long as it's not flat top, we're not getting power amp distortion. Now yeah, you can hear it. Okay, when it starts getting a true flat top, that tells us we're actually clipping. Now there's a, some interesting transitional areas where the uh, preamp is doing funny business while the power amp is clipping and you'll see kind of little trans you know transient notches right. in the uh, waveform uh, <laughs> see it's kind of it's clipping twice some in the preamp and some in the power amp which adds a complex layer of overtones that um, we can get, for instance, with the Overdrive 200. Hmm. Gives that extra little, uh, extra little sizzle on the preamp. This amp's a little under biased because it's starting to distort before it actually hits clipping, but it helps it run cooler, so that's right. probably a good thing. Um, but if you uh, turn the master down below the point of power amp breakup, then you get this other kind of breakup instead. Uh, you hear all that second harmonic coming in. Uh -huh. So, before we take this bad boy off the bench, I thought this would be a good chance to talk about uh, tube watts versus solid state watts, truth or fiction. Um, and as it turns out, there is truth to the long held opinion that a tube amp sounds louder than the same power of solid state amp. 
and we have an opportunity to demonstrate that right here and now. So Peter has hooked up his guitar. We Howdy. have a speaker in the uh, padded chamber that's pat that's damped way down, and I'm running on a dummy load. So Peter will give us a few licks while we watch the scope. And you'll notice that the waveform is topping out. That's called clipping. And that's your classic effect of overdrive distortion. And you see it jumping or sagging a little when he hits a hard note. That's all part of the mojo. Uh, kind of equalizes the balance between clean and dirty. Uh, now, as we turn this ma the master down on this particular Marshall, uh, and we go back to looking at the waveform, another a pre a preamp stage is clipping now, and its waveform is different. So it's a somewhat different sounding kind of distortion. It's got all those kind of little peaks on there. But going back to our uh, this basic uh, you know power amp distortion, give us a couple of licks. Okay, you'll notice that it's again very flat top now. Okay, hold on a second, Peter. When we measure the power of an amp on the bench, we normally input a sine wave tone uh, from a signal generator. Then I, as you watch the scope, I turn it up until you see it clip. There it starts to clip. And the signal, you know, the, watt, the voltage level at that point, it can be translated into power. And as I turn it up harder, you can see the clipping develops some interesting additional character, part of which is relative to where the master volume is set. So there's a higher master volume. We're really just getting the power amp distortion. Now notice some of the details. There's that funny little step in the middle. That's kind of part of the mojo. It gets that extra little bacon sizzle that's um, characterized by all the really classic amps. But here's the point about power. This is what we see on the bench. It's uh, maxing out just below plus and minus two divisions on the scope. That's into a dummy load. Now watch what, watch what happens when I switch the dummy load for a real loudspeaker, which is in a padded chamber so we can stand to be in the same room with it. See the waveform is is not the same. It's got it's got more overshoot, uh, more character to it because it kind of changed and came alive into a real speaker. That's one of the reasons a classic tube amp is always deemed to sound louder than a standard solid state amp because on a tube amp the waveform changes into a real loudspeaker. On a solid state amp it doesn't. It just retains that same flat top characteristic. All right, well, let's unhook this guy and uh, get this. Uh... All right, now, can we take a little four pound quilter uh, FET based solid state amp and put it to the same test and see what happens? So we'll start with a viewing of the uh, um, the output signal as if we were playing the Marshall. Get it just everything on five here. Um, now, one thing you'll notice right off, it's got more power because it went from the Marshall topped out about there. And we have 200 watts, so we go a little further. But of course, we have a master volume that lets us keep that waveform at any volume level we want. So I'll set it about the same as the Marshall, uh, approximately 100 watts. Now, you notice we've got some of the same action going on here. There's the, way the peaks sag a little as we punch in more gain. We've got the uh, little extra fit sizzle in the middle. Uh, but it, you know, uh, into the dummy load, it's pretty much a uniform flat top, just like it was uh, with the tube amp in a dummy load. But watch what happens when we switch to the real speaker. Actually, more overshoot and voltage swing than we even got with the tube amp. 
So uh, that's a little quick primer on some of the tone mojo of a uh, that we've been building into the quilter amps for a long time. Now, this is a tone block 202. It has a very interesting new setting. Going back to the dummy load, we have a setting called FRFR which turns the amp into a conventional solid state amp. I'm going to flip the switch. You see virtually no change on the signal, but watch what happens into a real speaker. So we're on FR now. You saw the flat top signal on the scope with the dummy load. Looks just the same into the speaker. But when I go into full Q or vintage, everything kind of comes to life and you get that extra output and uh, extra juice that uh, characterizes um, the best amps. Yet on the bench into a resistive load, they both measure the same 100 watts. Um, now while we're at it, I suppose, can mention a few things. Here is again, suppose there's some voltage overdrive. Now if I turn the limiter up, the limiter basically it's you might think I'm, it's the same as turning it down but what it's doing is it's sort of intercepting and keeping it you can basically let it go into a little distortion or with no limiting you get lots of distortion so you can kind of regulate the depth of distortion if you will and uh, that's a very useful effect for uh, uh, getting sustained lead tones without, with less distortion if you would rather have it that way. Yeah. Now we're rolling. So are we into the cabinet? Or the uh, we're in the dummy load with attenuated cabinet. And that's on, uh, you won't hear much difference between FR and full Q because we're in the dummy load. And then there's uh, vintage, which, uh, but going to the uh, live speaker. Don't listen yeah. to this for a tone example. This yeah, is yeah. Uh, a in a yeah, the here. speaker <laughs> is, uh, is inside a padded chamber, so we can stand to be in the room. But uh, when you're in front of the speaker, it's a very uh, bright and awesome experience. <laughs> with our master volume, keep playing. Keeps the same waveform from, you know, right, right down to zero or all the way up to full volume. Yeah. So there you have it.